Hey YouTube, this is my Browse Blades Silent Soldier version 2 Ranger model neck knife. Now, I've been practicing this uh, this spin. Do not try this at home. The ultimate ninja move. Let's try five. One, two, three, four. Five. I think you'll like this knife, guys. It's a great knife. Alright, but enough of that. Enough of that tomfoolery. Let's get into the review of this blade. Now this model, well first of all, the version 2 models have this finger guard here. It's actually very useful because it gives you much more, more of a contact point, more leverage. This is pretty much how this is designed to be held. Right, and it also keeps you from going up onto the edge. Now this model has a Cerakote. It also comes in, in a uh, satin finish model without the Cerakote. The satin model is $30 less. All right, uh, this is D2 tool steel. You see a nice curve to this Ranger model. Nice jimping there. You know, it's you can open packages very well or slice uh, whatever you need to slice. Now as you can see, you know, mine is kind of beat up because I've had this uh, for a long time now. I've had this since, uh, at least since winter. And I've cut a lot of things with it. And I've even used it as a throwing knife. It's, it's an extremely durable knife. Uh, you know, it's because of the thickness and the one piece construction. Here is the sheath that it comes with. Nice Kydex sheath. And it locks into place with a nice uh, audible click so you know it's in there. And it does not rattle at all. Very nice, silent, holds it very securely. Right, you see the eyelets there. Right, and a pocket clip there. You could also wear it as a neck knife. You can wear it on your belt, however you want to do it. And the skeletonized handle, you know, makes it very easy to uh, deploy the blade. And as I said, I have cut a lot of stuff with it. Let's check the sharpness. I have not resharpened this yet. All right, so let's, uh, ah. yeah, you know, uh, the edge has held up very well very well considering you know I opened a lot of packages with it I even sliced into uh, some pieces of wood and that f that footage will be coming up in this video oh, whoa <laughs> see that's why you don't want to do that yeah I know remember the uh, the, the uh, most deadly combat move skeletonized handle now you see these extra holes to make it lighter uh, this weighs in at 2.3 ounces, uh, remarkably lightweight, especially for such a you know a thick and durable blade, and that's because of the handle. Now the edge length, and notice the edge length is actually longer than what you would call the blade length. The length of the actual edge from you know there to the tip is 2.8 inches. Now as for the ergonomics. You know, this is a lightning hole. This is not this is not meant for a finger, okay? You're supposed to hold it like this, basically. Um, some people ask, could you punch with it? Now, you, you really can't because a human fist, make a fist. You see how little room there is between the fingers? Yeah, when you make a fist, there's not that much room. But look how wide this middle part is. All right, so if you did put your fingers there, you're just, you're weakening your, your fist because you're taking a good fist and you're prying apart your own fingers. So, no, no, you're only going to injure yourself if you try that crap. 2.8 inches, as I said. The total length is 5 inches. And it's very interesting because uh, this is a micro Microtech SOCOM Delta. And this is just an example of a basically a folding knife with a four inch blade All right, and as you can see 
right? The Ranger, it's basically the same size as uh, your average folder with a four inch blade length. Okay, so right away, if you carry a folder of about this size, and maybe, maybe you're not into folders as much anymore, maybe you're just tired of, you know, wondering about the lock and the blade play, maybe you just want something simple, a one-piece fixed blade that you could carry in place of a folder, or, you know, you could carry both, really. But yeah, if you're considering going that way, this would be perfect because, you know, it's about the same size. Um, obviously, the sheath does add a little bulk to it, but you got to consider this is thinner than a folder, you know. Well, this is an exceptionally thin folder, but it's this is still even thinner than this exceptionally thin folder. Check out my review of this, by the way. All right, now let's compare it to another small fixed blade. All right, this is a... Uh, SE Azula. Now the Azula is a fairly small knife, and a, oh, this is the Azula too with the micarta scales, but this is a very popular knife. You can see uh, how much uh, smaller the Ranger is compared to even this very small knife. So super convenient, and it's just super light and compact. With the skeletonized handle merging into the blade, it's almost like the most compact, efficient design you can get. And with a knife like this that does not have a full, you know, the problem is that it does not have a full-size handle, so what he's done is give you the retaining ring and this, right, this good ergonomics here, the guard, and this, and that compensates for not having a full length handle. And even this curve right here seats perfectly into a human palm and your thumb fits right there. This is a multi-purpose blade. It's designed for anything you might need um, in a compact package. You, you can, you know, suburban uses, you can open a package with it, stuff like that. Uh, you can, you know, cut paracord, cut tape, duct tape, whatever you need to cut. But when you're talking about a neck knife, you're also talking about a fixed blade that you would be carrying when you are unable to carry anything larger. They're seen as self-defense knives, not because a small knife is necessarily, you know, a freaking, you know, it's not the ultimate weapon by any means, but because you're much more likely to actually have this with you in an emergency, neck knives are often conceived of as uh, defensive tools. Now in that vein, uh, because of that, a lot of people are scared of this uh, retaining hole here because they think that if you were trying to uh, do a strike with this, you know, any kind of strike, they're afraid you would hurt your finger. They're afraid if you hit a, a, a real target that it might dislocate your finger or hurt your finger. I actually decided to test that, to test that out for myself. So what I did was I just, I took this blade out and I did some basic strikes against large piece of wood. The surface of a piece of wood obviously is much harder than the surface of your enemy combatant as it were. If I can strike, do some basic strikes against a, a hard target like that, and my fingers are still fine, you know, there's no problem with the handle. All right, at this time, let me roll in uh, a little bit of that footage. Uh, this was taken like months and months ago in the winter time when I first got this knife, okay? So that's why it freaking looks like winter. But this is just going to be footage of some basic strikes against a piece of wood. Again, this is just to prove that it's not going to break your finger. Well, that's from a machete. That was nice. Do not construe this footage as a martial arts lesson. This is not a martial arts lesson. Not at all. All right, because, look, the use of a knife requires an extremely high degree of uh, hand speed, hand-eye coordination, uh, timing, footwork, reaction time, 
stuff that you either have or you don't. I'm not going to teach anyone stuff that cannot be taught, but this is just going to test the grip on this knife, so enjoy the footage. I will narrate it. Okay, starting slow. Remember, this is just to test the grip on the knife. Single strikes, a short uppercut. I'm not going to do any covering and evasion, and, you know, this is not a shadow boxing lesson. I'm just testing the grip on the knife. And also, it's a still shot, so I'm not going to, like, shuffle around and stuff like that. All right, uppercuts into shovel hooks, then low to high, low to high combos. Going to add some slashes in a minute. I'm also going to strike with my off hand, but I can't hit it too hard because my thing will fall over, so that's really just to keep the rhythm. All right, we're doing V-shaped slashes there, uh, you know, slashes at 45, and now it just turns into kind of uh, kind of just a brutal shanking at this point, but it's a good test of the knife. All right, and I'm going to be, uh, <laughs> we're going to finish off the wooden man with a roundhouse kick. All right, back again. And I have the two Silent Soldier version 2 Hawk models, uh, just, for, just for comparison and some scenery. i still got to do a review of those in the future, so stay tuned for that. All right, now let's tackle the sticky issue of price. All right, first of all, I don't sell knives. I don't own a knife store. I don't make knives. I don't set the prices for these things. I just report on these items to you. I show you the product. The price is between you and your budget and whoever you're buying it from. Yeah, so I am not responsible for pricing. What I would say is this, you know, if you want to buy a $20 or $30 knife, there's so many companies that'll sell you one. I mean, uh, in the cutlery market, that budget price range, like from let's say 10 to $30, it's already so crowded that it would make no sense at all for a custom knife maker to try to compete within that price range. It's like saying a five-star restaurant should try to compete by, you know, making dollar Happy Meals to compete with McDonald's. Trust me, it just makes sense for, uh, custom knife makers and, and new knife makers to try and compete in an area where there's not 20 companies importing stuff from China that you'd have to compete with. Alright, so that's where this fits in. It's made in the USA. Everybody wants made in the USA, but they want it for China prices. Well, you know, everybody wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to die. So yeah, I'll be the first to admit, these are kind of expensive, but at the same time, what is he supposed to do? Try to sell you yet another $20 knife that you can buy from 30 different companies right now? I mean, like I said, and plus he's already given uh, SOG, S-O-G, permission to make budget versions with cheaper steels. So he's more than done whatever he can to, to help people... If they can't get one of these, you can get like the $40 or however much the SOG versions are. The sound effects help. Alright, I'm getting the hang of this. Yeah, do not try that at home. My final thoughts. Uh, it's not for everyone. You know, first of all, not everyone prefers a fixed blade as a, a small knife. A lot of people prefer folders. It is very well designed. Like I said, the skeletonized handle merging with um, the blade itself to, to actually have a longer edge length than it does blade length, uh, that, that is a tight design. That is efficient. The addition of the finger guard in the version 2 makes perfect sense once you put it in your hand. A Cerakote is a very a very good kind of coating. I mean, it's it's far superior to the, the cheap Teflon coating that you'll find on cheaper knives. And overall, Jason Browse himself, he's a good guy. He's one of the few knife makers that you never hear anything bad about. You know, you never hear that he was rude or anything, which is so common today with other knife makers. 
And, you know, people get mad, oh, he sends stuff to knife reviewers. Well, I mean, that's because he wants you, he, he wants you to see his stuff. It's a lot better than arrogant knife makers that don't give a flying crap about you guys, you know, the, the YouTube community. So me, you know, I prefer makers like Browse who do care about you guys and consider you um, valued, valued clients, basically. You know, sometimes you'll get people that say, oh, he just uses a machine to make those. Well, I mean, the machine doesn't just make it, you know, he, he still had to design it. These are made partly on machine because he wants to make enough of them that most people can have one if they want one. He doesn't want to sit there working on one single knife for three weeks and then some like millionaire gets to buy that super special knife. I like the way he does it better than the people that you can't even get on their waiting list. What good is that? All right, well, a long review, but I felt it was, I felt this knife was worth giving a, a detailed review on all aspects. All right, hope you enjoyed it. This has been We All Juggle Knives, and I am out.